Hello everyone, my name is Andrew Benson Green and I'm Founder and Chief Executive Officer at the Be Gifted Foundation of Sierra Leone. Um, our goal is to use a combination of creativity and technology as tools to address human rights, enhance peace and development. Our new and contemporaneous project is called the Second Chances Project. This project provides a new lease of hope for children and youth affected by war and simultaneous periods of war and Ebola to be able to emerge and how to pass those challenges through our approaches of creativity and technology. Over the last 15 years, I've been an integral part of youth development and programs that serve the common good. In the last 15 years, I've realized the problems faced by young people following the conflicts that raged in our country which lasted for over 10 years. It was and still is my belief that creative approaches backed by technology innovation can help young people to move past the state of grief and to engage in the global programs that empower them and help them to move beyond their social and economic challenges. I've dedicated my life to serving and teaching children and youth who have been violated and who have faced hardship as a result of war and Ebola. The Second Chances Project is a demonstration of the extent of intervention that can be put into fall to help children and youth and to create the enabling platform for them to hold up past the many challenges of social and economic problems they face. As founder of Be Gifted, I well imagine a program that could become something that could create the window of opportunities for young people who otherwise will not, never have the chances to move beyond those human obstacles that and seem to deprive them from access to new forms of development. I finished my undergrad in 1998 and immediately in 1999 I became sufficiently aware of the problems faced by young people following the conflicts that reached and it was and still is my belief that you know appeasement by means of telecommunications technology and creative approaches can help to do something more and help to change the lives of children and youth who have emerged from both war and violence. Till date, I hold this view even in my poor view of bringing in a new initiative that could help address post Ebola situations that young people face in restoration of their hope and dreams. Throughout my efforts, I've been asked to present in over 40 countries around the world on my groundbreaking approaches on how to bring in creative and innovative approaches that could serve as a common good and that could help spur young people into more creative and lucrative and entrepreneurship roles. For example, in 2003, the first World Summit on the Information Society in Geneva summoned me and many young people across the world as part of the panelists to demonstrate how the use of technologies can help in poverty eradication, entrepreneurship and how to revive young people who whose lives were at stake after the period of war and during the ashes of war and violence. During those presentations, I made it clear that poverty is not just about the lack of food, it can also be the lack of opportunities for young people to engage in a global society. As a result of that effort, in 2003, the Cable and Wireless Child Net Awards in the UK recognized my efforts as one of a number of projects that came to the shortlist. Over the years, I've also been very active on how ICTs can bridge the digital divide. I assembled a number of technologies from the World Computer Exchange to the UK-based charity group Computer Aid International in UK, where we brought computers and technologies and innovations to give a voice to young people who otherwise would not have the ability to articulate their thoughts and their views. Because of this, the Bremen Peace Commendation and the Threshold Foundation in Germany recognized these efforts and you know, recognized my ability to create peace via technology. And in that same year, in 2003, I was summoned to Germany you know, to help raise this platform, as well as at the 
first African Canadian Symposium for Leadership and Integrity hosted by St. Francis Xavier University in Canada. In 2004, I was a uh, Asian Self Scholar in McGill in Canada, where I made clear that the use of children affected by conflicts and child soldiers is prohibitive and that really impedes the growth of when young people engage in societies and the legacy of war on children cannot be overemphasized. So our new initiative called the Second Chances creates an effective system of second chances where young people will have the opportunity to think creatively, to think out of the box, to be innovative and to be provided the tools that are necessary for them to become global citizens, for them to interact on a global level and become young people who can test their abilities beyond borders, who can initiate projects of their own, who can be innovative. And this has been a lesson that I took to the, the ITU in Geneva in 2011 during the International Telecommunications Conference and competition and uh, they were looking for young people whose ideas could help break the mold and who can provide ample proof that technology can help solve real world problems. Today, as I advocate for this very important initiative of giving young people a second chance, not just in Sierra Leone, but within the African communities and within the Manor River Union of Sierra Leone, Guinea and Liberia, which have had its own legacy of a simultaneous period of war and hardship and now Ebola, young people are at the brunt of all of these challenges and it's all too often that we need to bring in the right tools, the right technology and the right training to give them at least a life that is wholesome, a life that moves them beyond the, the dull drums that you know war and health has at Eve. Right at the top of this is my own leadership potentials to see this project drive through and this was well recognized at the first World Ethics Forum in Oxford in England where the World Bank summoned 25 young leaders in which I was a part and parcel of that debate which saw the interaction that it's only left with the global community to fully involve young people into the process of youth activism and the process of leadership and the process of development and until you give young people the opportunities you never know their potentials in life and how they could transform those little opportunities into something that also could have ripple effects in society. So as I introduce this very important project which is the second chance project it provides um, a second chance for children, youth, who we are emerging from wars and now Ebola to have an adequate system of second chance. I call upon all of you, well-meaning citizens of the world, to join our forces at the Gifted Foundation to bring a new ray of opportunities and a new lease of life and a new hope to young people and transform their lives for the better. Thank you.